Oh, wake up. It's oh. time for the kids' video. Oh, what, what, what time is it? It's 10 a.m. Oh. oh, I fell asleep last night. Oh, no, did I miss it? Not yet. Oh, okay. All right, all right, thanks. Okay, wow, 10 o'clock. All right, uh, oh, what do we got going this morning? 10 oh, it's kids' hour. It's kids' hour. Um, Oh, okay. I, I don't remember what. Uh, what's our lineup today? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I need my clipboards. Oh, well, oh, wait a minute. I didn't need two clipboards. Oh, <laughs> well, that works. All right, very good. Oh boy, good morning, kids. It is ten o'clock. Well, it was ten o'clock. It's not anymore, right? I wonder. Maybe you slept in too this morning. Anybody sleep in this morning? Raise your hand. Is anybody still in your pajamas? Raise your hand. I'm not in my pajamas. I left them at home. But this is what I was wearing yesterday. Sorry. Oh, I do need to brush my teeth. <clears throat> I need to take a shower too. But that's all right. We're going to get through the lesson today. We got a lot of exciting stuff planned for you today. Miss Ann and her friends are here and we've got an exciting lesson about Jesus. And you know what? I think I even saw a couple videos from some kids that said their memory verse last week and some pretty funny hats. Are you ready to get started this morning? All right, let's call Miss Anna and get started. Hey guys, welcome back for another week of the Kids Hour. That was, that was pretty crazy that my dad was asleep, wasn't it? I've never actually had to wake my dad up. Isn't that funny? Man. Do you guys wish you could sleep in? Yeah, me too. Believe me, I do too. But this video, we have quite a few really fun, exciting things. So I'm glad you're awake and I'm glad that you're with me today. You know, last week we had a challenge. Do you guys remember it? Yeah, we had a challenge to memorize a verse or two verses if you were in the older kids and to send a video in of you saying the verse with a crazy hat on. And we had two people send in videos. So we're going to go ahead and put those videos up so you get to watch them. John 11, 25 and 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he Good job, guys. You did so well. I'm so proud of you. Man, those are some silly hats, right? I mean, <laughs> did you see all the hats stacked on top? And then the one of the kids was riding on a rocking horse? That was so cool. Man. So, do you guys remember when we've been using this time machine to go back in time? You know, this past week, we actually built a new feature to this time machine. You want to know what it is? Yeah? It's really exciting. So, instead of just being able to go back in time, now we can teleport to a different spot. So, teleport, that means we can be here and turn on the time machine and it'll bump us to a different place. Isn't that so cool? Do you guys want to try it? Because this past week, we made this really, really cool blanket fort. And I think that would be the perfect place to try out our new teleport. Does that sound good? All right, so you're gonna to have to close your eyes. Remember how we do this? Close your eyes tight. And I'm gonna turn this lever and we're gonna teleport into the blanket fort. Get your Bibles before we leave because we want to make sure you have them because we are going to talk about Jesus and a really cool story. So get your Bibles. 
And now I want you to close your eyes, close them tight. And I'm gonna turn the lever and we're gonna teleport into a blanket fort. You ready? Keep those eyes closed. Here we go. <laughs> wow, it worked. Do you guys see where I'm at? I'm inside a blanket fort. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. You know, maybe at the end, I can show you guys what the outside of this blanket fort looks like. Would you like that? Yeah? All right. Remember I told you to get your Bibles? Did you do it? Yeah? Okay, good. Go ahead and get your Bible. Now, turn to Matthew chapter 21. And I'm going to tell you guys a story about Jesus. Okay? Matthew, remember it's the first book in the New Testament. Okay? Matthew chapter 21. And we're going to start reading in verse 1. So that's right at the beginning of the chapter. You ready? It says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. Wait a second. So this is Jerusalem. Do you guys remember last week when the, we heard the disciples talking and saying that last time Jesus was in Jerusalem, they tried to stone him. But here he is going back into Jerusalem. You know, Jesus knew what was going on in his life, what the future held, and he still decided to go back there. Oh, let's read verse 3, because we saw Jesus telling his disciples to go into the village and they'll find a donkey and her colt. So that's like her baby. He'll find them tied up. And do you know what Jesus tells them to do? He says, loose them and bring them unto me. So untie them and bring them back to me. And he goes on and says, And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. So Jesus says, Go into this village and get the donkey and her colt and untie them and bring them back to me. And if anybody says anything to you, just tell them that the Lord needs them. And they'll let you go. They'll let you bring them back to me. That's pretty cool just by itself. I mean, if you walked and found somebody's horse tied up and you untied it and started walking away with it, normally people aren't just going to let you walk away with their stuff. But Jesus told them to say that the Lord needs them and the owners just let them go. That'd be pretty cool to be able to watch that, don't you think? Oh, I'm so tired. You are always tired. Uh, you just need to think happy. Okay? Yes. Keep moving. We're traveling with Jesus, seeing new places, new things. It's exciting. Speaking from the positive person, I have to be negative. You do not, Matthew. You can be happy. But we my have Jesus. Nice. You're right. Mr. Positive all the time. I like to bring in a negative. Realistic. Men, yes. men, I hope you all rested well last night. <laughs> well, we can't complain, can we? No, we can't complain. Matthew, how did you like that rock? It was a uh, pleasant It's not really, Master. I am sorry. Well, you remember what I told you, that the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. And now you get to experience a little bit what it's like to be me. Amazing, Master. <sighs> what are we doing today, Jesus? Oh, today is a very important day, my men. I want you to go into the village down yonder, and there you will find a donkey tied with its colt. You'll say to the man, the owner of that donkey, that Jesus has need of him, and he will let you take him. Bring him back here to me. 
Yes, master. Man, I didn't know if that owner would let us take these donkeys. Oh, I know, right? All we had to say was, the Lord needs him, and that was it. That was great. Oh, miraculous. Only Jesus could oh, do that. Wonderful. Oh, I wonder if we missed any of his teaching while we were gone. I hope not. I love his teaching. Me too. Even though I don't always understand. Oh, my men, good morning. Or, should I say, good afternoon. Good afternoon, master. We brought back the donkeys. I see that, and you brought the colt as well. Yes. Thank you, men, for believing me. Thank you, men, for honoring me and honoring my father. You're welcome, master. This is the least we can do for you. So bring over the colt. We must begin our journey into the city. Yes, master. Here he is. Clippity cloppity, clippity clop. We're headed back into the city? Yes, my men. I have an appointment. My father would have me to be there. Clippity clop. Oh, what is that? that? Oh, what is that? Are they saying Susanna? Clippity clop. Oh no, I think they are saying Hosanna. What does Hosanna even mean? I think they are hailing the king, Jesus. Wow. Oh look, they're throwing palm branches on the ground. What is that? Oh, Hosanna! 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 Wow, that was pretty cool. Did you, you, did you hear what all those people were saying to Jesus? What they were crying out? They were saying, Hosanna. You know, you want to read that in the actual Bible? It's all the way in verse number 8. 8 and 9. Okay, so it says, go ahead and read along. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Wow. You know, all of this happened because the disciples obeyed what Jesus told them to do. Do you remember when he told them to go into the city to get the donkey and her colt? I don't think they understood why at the time, but they did it anyway. And look what happened. They brought Jesus into the city and everyone is crying, Hosanna. Do you guys know what Hosanna means? You know, Hosanna means, oh, save. So they were calling him their salvation. Save us. And you know, what else did they call Jesus? They called him the son of David. Do you guys remember who David was? David was a king, right? So if he was the son of David, they were calling him a king. And you know, kings normally would be riding on horses or something very strong and majestic. But that didn't start until after Solomon. So do you guys remember who Solomon is? Solomon is King David's son. So all the way through to King David, if you were royalty, you would ride on a donkey. But once it got to about the time of King Solomon, they started riding horses. So Jesus doesn't come in on this big, strong horse, like, like a conqueror or like a general. He came in on a donkey, which used to mean royalty. So he's coming in on that donkey like David, as a royal, as a king. But at the same time, it also showed a sign of peace because Donkeys then, when, at the time this story was taking place, 
written by poor people and maybe like a merchant who wasn't very wealthy. So he was showing humility by coming in on that donkey and at the same time showing that he was a king, the son of David. That is pretty cool. You know, I wonder if there were other animals that wanted Jesus to ride on them. You know, because Jesus could have ridden on anything. If he chose a donkey, I mean, he could have chose any other animal, right? Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna our king is here. Our savior is Son here. Of David. Oh, Harriet, look. It's Jesus riding a donkey into Jerusalem. Doesn't he know donkeys are stubborn? I would have given him a much gentler ride. He couldn't have ridden on your back, Bertha. Have you looked in a mirror lately? You have plates running up and down your back. Hey, don't make fun of my plates. You know I'm self-conscious about that. I'm just stating a fact. I, on the other hand, could have given him a lovely ride down into Jerusalem. <laughs> nice and steady. He wouldn't have ridden on you, Harriet. You smell horrible. Oh, really? Well, at least he can ride on my back. Ladies, ladies, calm down. Haven't either of you ever read the book of Zechariah? No, we're dinosaurs. We, we can't, can't read. read. Ugh, dinosaurs these days. No wonder we're going extinct. It literally says in Zechariah that he would be riding on a donkey, not a dinosaur. Jesus is just fulfilling the prophecy, and you wouldn't want to get in the way of that, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, you're right, but it still would have been cool. Oh well. God knows best, and he saw fit for Jesus to come into Jerusalem riding a donkey, not a dinosaur. So let's leave it at that way, okay? Did you hear what those dinosaurs were saying? Remember that one was talking about Zechariah and how it was said in Zechariah that Jesus was going to do this. That's, that's pretty cool, right? Do you guys know what that's called? When somewhere, say maybe in the Old Testament, it says that Jesus is going to do something and then in the New Testament, he does it. Do you know what that's called? That is called a prophecy. So what exactly is prophecy? Or have you guys ever heard of when they called people a prophet? Yeah? Well, what does that mean? You know, prophecy, just by definition, so what that means is a foretelling. Well, what does that mean? It means when you tell something, before it happens. A prediction. So I predict that three, mil three million seconds from now, we're going to be doing this. Or next year, we're going to be doing this. Or tomorrow, we're going to be doing this. That's a prophecy. It's foretelling. But since only God knows the future, and only He knows what's going to happen, the only true prophecy and the only true prophet is someone that is in contact with God. So God has told them something that was going to happen in the future. Because we can't prophesy the future. Because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, the Bible even says that you don't know what the day will bring. So I don't know the future. But God put his words into men in the Old Testament prophesying of the Messiah. So you guys know who the Messiah is? The Messiah means deliverer. So the Jews right here at this time, we're talking about when we see Jesus in this story, the Jews have been waiting for the Messiah. So the Messiah to come deliver and save them. And did you know that Jesus fulfilled 44 of the mess messianic, which means Messiah, 
the Messianic prophecies in the Old Testament. Do you guys want to see that passage that the dinosaur was talking about? The one in Zechariah? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to turn there. If you want to turn, you can. If not, you can just listen to me. It's Zechariah, which is in the Old Testament, chapter 9, verse 9. Let's see what it says. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey, and upon a colt, the foal of a donkey. Wow, that's exactly what just happened. Okay, so it's saying, shout and rejoice, O daughter of Jerusalem. They just came into Jerusalem. Jesus rode that donkey, which it also says here that he'd be riding on a donkey, upon the colt, which is like a baby of a donkey. That's exactly what is happening now? Do you remember? Jesus told the disciples to go get the colt and its mother. Jesus rode on that colt. And if you look in the other, the other gospels that tell that story, Mark and Luke say that that colt had never been ridden before. So he's riding on this baby or maybe like a teenage donkey that had never been ridden before. And he is riding that donkey into Jerusalem and there's crowds of people shouting and rejoicing. But you don't see that donkey getting upset. You don't see him getting a little skittish because that's what happens when you have baby or teenage young animals. When a lot's going on, a lot of times they'll freak out. But not this donkey because Jesus was riding him and Jesus had control over the donkey and the donkey obeyed Jesus. You know, what else did Zechariah say? He said that they would shout um, that thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Do you guys remember what they were saying in Jerusalem? They were saying, Hosanna, salvation, save us. So our salvation is here. They were calling him Hosanna. They also called him the son of David, you remember? And remember we just talked about if they called him the son of David, they were saying that he was a king. And in Zechariah it says, thy king cometh. So the king came. Isn't that so cool? Man, so it was prophesied that Jesus would ride in on a colt, on a donkey. And that's exactly what happened. And he brought salvation. You know, Jesus is the only way to salvation for us now, too. He is still our Hosanna. Save us. And he brought them salvation the next few days because this is just the beginning. When Jesus is riding into Jerusalem, just a few days later, he was going to be crucified and die and pay the price for our sins to bring us that salvation. So when he was riding into Jerusalem, little did they know that a few days later, he would be bringing them their salvation, their spiritual salvation, saving them from their sins. You know, if we go back to Matthew 21, you guys go back there. Remember where it is? First book of the New Testament. That's right. Good job. So if we go back to Matthew 21 and we read verse 10, it says, And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So Jesus enters into Jerusalem and they're all crying, Hosanna, but they are all moved, everybody in the city. Even those not crying Hosanna, they were moved. And you know, this is really cool. If we go to Matthew chapter 2, you guys can turn there. So it's at the beginning of Matthew. You there yet? 
All right, if you're not there, you can stop and just listen to me. Matthew chapter 2, we're reading verse 3. Now, this is back when Jesus was being born, okay? So this is right at the beginning of the story. It says, when Herod the king had heard these things, so when he had heard about Jesus and about the king being born, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. That's kind of cool. It's the same now as it was then. All of Jerusalem was troubled when they heard that this king was going to be born. And Jesus rides into Jerusalem and they are recognizing him as the king and they were all moved. That's pretty cool. So when he was born, Jerusalem was moved and stirred up. And right before he's about to die, when he comes back into that city, they were moved. And you want to know another cool thing? Let's go ahead and read verse Um, let's read verse 23 of Matthew chapter 2. So we're still there. Let's read verse 23. It says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. So this is talking about Jesus when he's still a young child. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. So we see Jesus fulfilling prophecy even as a child when he dwelt so he lived in a city called Nazareth and you know back in Matthew 21 the next verse so after the city was moved saying who is this verse 11 says and the multitude said this is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee so Jesus fulfilled another prophecy just right there he came out of Nazareth And that is what the people recognized him as. So he was this king, the salvation that came out of Nazareth. And all of that was prophesied in the Old Testament. It was just another proof that he was the Messiah. And us looking at that in the Bible and comparing the Old Testament prophecies with the New Testament and how they came true, that's just another way to prove that God's word is true, that it's correct, that it is truth. But you know, in the other testaments, so the other tellings of this story, if we go to John, and I'll turn there. You can just stay where you're at. John chapter 12, verse 16 says, talking about the disciples, these things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him. And that they had done these things unto him. So this is saying that the disciples didn't really understand what was going on. When all of this was happening, they didn't understand all of the prophecies that tied in with it. They didn't know exactly what was happening. They didn't know that in just a few days, Jesus was going to be crucified. And that they all were going to run. They didn't know that. But they still obeyed Jesus when he told them to go into that town and to get the cult. They obeyed not knowing what exactly was going on. And, you know, they didn't know until later when they were looking back. And the more that you grow as a Christian, the more you read your Bible, the more you understand. Now, at first, you may not understand just like the disciples, they didn't understand. But later on, as they grew, and Jesus had to show them, had to tell them, had to help them understand. So as you're reading your Bible, and as you're looking at the stories of Jesus, as you're looking in the Old Testament stories, if you want to look up the prophecies that are connected to Jesus' life, you may not understand at first. But the more you read and the more you pray and ask God to show you, the more you're going to grow and the more you're going to be able to learn from God's word. The more you'll be able to understand. And always make sure before you start reading the Bible to pray and ask Jesus to show you, to help you understand. Because The disciples didn't understand. They were with Jesus in person, and they didn't understand. 
Jesus had to help them. And Jesus will help you too. When you really want to understand and learn as you're reading the Bible or as your parents are reading the Bible to you, God will show you. He will help you grow and help you understand. Isn't that pretty cool that God does that for us? That he helped his disciples understand and he'll help you understand too. Well, thanks, Anna, for bringing that great Bible lesson this morning. Isn't God's Word wonderful? We get to spend time together seeing how Jesus lived, seeing the things that uh, God did in other people's lives, and we get to learn those for our own lives and our own hearts. I hope this morning that you're trying to listen to God as He speaks to you through His Word, and I hope you obey what He says. I hope you this week obey Mom and Dad. They've been put here on this earth to help you learn about the Lord and to bring you to Him. So thanks again, Anna, for bringing that Bible lesson. Kids, you did such a great job on participating in last week's Bible challenge. This week we have a challenge that's kind of fun. You don't have to video yourself this week. Uh, we're going to let Anna tell you more about that. It may have something to do with a blanket fort. All right, we'll see you next week. This was episode number five. See you next Sunday, 10 a.m. And don't forget, bring your imagination. Once upon a time, when I was a little girl, there was a power outage at my house. Do you know what that means? That means all of the lights went out. All of the power went out. And you know what I did? Instead of sitting there being bored or playing on my phone or on a tablet or something else, me and my sisters decided we were going to do something fun we were gonna build a fort. Now, what did we build that fort out of, you might say? We built it out of blankets and chairs, just like the one I'm in now. And you know, that was so much fun. Me and my sisters played in our little fort for hours. It was dark outside of the fort and inside of the fort because there wasn't any lights or anything on, but we had so much fun. So I thought that this week's challenge, you guys could build your own blanket fort. Does that sound like fun? Yeah. It was so much fun when I did it. You guys know how to build a blanket fort? It's really very easy. And there are so many different ways you can do it. You can get so many different blankets. You can get all of them in your house that your parents will let you get. You can take them off your bed. You can put pillows in the fort. That's what we used to do. We would put the pillows in there so we didn't have to sit on the floor. So a basic, super, super easy way to do a fort is to get chairs. If you have about four chairs, that's good. And you put them in a little square. So you put one here, 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 and here. And you can just put your blankets on top of it. So you stretch them over the two chairs this way, this way, however many ways you want to do it. And get creative with it. If you want to do it under maybe your table, you can put all of the blankets around and going down over top of your table and you can go inside there. You can do so many different crazy things with it. But once you are done making your blanket for it, I want you to get your mom or your dad to take a picture of you in your blanket for it. Now, you could be standing outside of it if it looks really, really cool on the outside, or you could be inside of it, hiding underneath. Just have fun with it and then send a picture in and we will put it in next week's video. So that is your challenge for this week. You guys think my blanket fort's pretty cool? Yeah, there are a ton of blankets in here. So get creative and make sure you send us in a picture of your blanket fort. So I guess that's it. I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to do the blanket fort.